Welcome back nerds, Afino here with a guide for Tyra no Kagekyo. She's a 5 star Avenger that became available in Little Big Tengu and she's got a bone to pick with the Genji. In fact, she has a skill for that. Genji must die. I guess Kagekyo's a bit of an Overwatch player. God, no wonder she's an Avenger. Anyway, it's a battery capping at 30%. It also has a number of 3 turn effects. A massive 100% crit damage buff, huge anti-Genji damage, and a large star absorption debuff to your other allies. Let's unpack this a little. The pool of Genji servants is actually quite small. Anyone with a clan named Minamoto and their retainers like Raiko, Kintoki, and Suna, Ushiwaka Maru and anyone directly connected to her, and then we have Tomoe Gozen and Yagyu Munenori off to the side. You won't encounter them too often in regular gameplay, but when you do, especially Berserker, Kintoki, or Raiko, you can wipe them off the face of the planet. Oh yeah, I want to point out that technically speaking, Kagekyo is listed as gender unknown, but given that this particular vengeful spirit is clearly Ushiwaka Maru, I'm just gonna keep saying she. Our next skill is Kagekyo Never Dies. It's a 3k health stackable Guts. It also gives a special 10 turn buff called Grudge of Vengeance when your Guts gets popped. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Finally, there's Death Resistance which scales with levels. Enemies occasionally have insta-kill gimmicks and Kagekyo is the kind of servant you'd use in challenge quests anyway, so it works out despite that part being niche. Now the biggest selling point of this skill is its cooldown. 4 turns at level 10, which is a blink of an eye in this game. True to the skill's name, using Kagekyo Never Dives correctly will give her an extraordinary amount of longevity, especially in last man standing situations. I'll get to some of the more advanced interactions in a little bit, but here's a perk just having a guts at all. Outside of some weird edge cases, if an enemy pops Tyra's guts and there aren't any other valid targets on the field, their turn just ends. So you can exploit this property to play for time and get your next guts. 3k health on guts isn't bad. It's a bit tight when enemies are trying to crit you to death, but we have a nice little tool for that. Kagekyo's third skill is Azamaru's Mist, a 2-hit evasion, 3-turn attack buff, and AoE curse. Because the evade lingers, you can pop this immediately to go on the offensive while starting up its cooldown. 6 turns, which is less generous than the guts, but you use it to play for time. On top of this, you can do first Asan slash Ku Cullen strats. The Atlas Academy uniform provides two key tools for solo play, cooldown reduction and on-demand invuln. There's also a debuff cleanse, but that's more situational. The TLDR is that you juggle your guts, evade, and mystic code skills, make reads on how much damage you can take without committing cooldowns, and scum your RNG if necessary. But at some point, you do have to push damage. Yeah, you have your crit buff and it's a pretty good one too, but you have one other very powerful tool on that front. Kagekyo's Noble Phantasm. Fleeting World of Fleeting Might is a single target quick attack and it's absolutely loaded. First of all, it preemptively purges buffs. Not only does it let you strike at protected targets and kill enemies through guts, but it also removes steroids, meaning that it has indirect defensive utility. If your enemy can't keep their buffs up for more than a single turn, you're getting a lot more mileage out of your health pool. The one downside is that buff purges don't work on unremovable box buffs that you'll see in challenge quests. So if there's an enemy with unremovable invulnerability, you'll need to find another way to get through it. Hey, remember those Grudge of Vengeance stacks I mentioned earlier? Well, this is where they come into play. Each stack adds 25% additional damage, capping at 100%. Actually, getting to 4 stacks is a bit of a long shot, but the point is that as Kagekyo gets roughed up over the course of a fight, she hits harder and harder. This opens up the possibility of face racing a boss during its most dangerous final phase, which is quite handy. This NP has a curse tied overcharge, but using Kagekyo for curse memes is a huge waste, so I wouldn't put too much stock in this particular effect. It's just some additional damage over time. Finally, Fleeting World of Fleeting Might has a generous hit count of 10, meaning that if you play your cards right, you're getting a bunch of stars and charge back. This gives you a lot of resources for your non-NP turns, meaning you can crit with your arts and quick cards to get even more charge with sets of another NP and so on. Helping you on the charge front are Kagekyo's passives. Self-restoration gives a little charge at the end of every turn, which is always nice. But Kagekyo can take particular advantage of the regular Avenger passive, where she gains increased charge from being hit. Avengers tend to be on the frail side, so they usually have trouble exploiting this passive. But Kagekyo has so many self-preservation tools, she can get a lot of mileage out of it. Down the road, she gets another leg up from the Mighty Chain update, which makes QAB chains some of the strongest in the game, since they get all three chain starter bonuses, crit chance and P-gain, star gen and damage. With Mighty Brave Chains in particular, these effects get added to the extra card. Except for crit chance, since extra cards can't crit. Doubly good for Kagekyo is that because her NP is a quick card, she can do an NP Arts Buster Mighty Brave Chain to maximize damage with pretty much no trade-off. Now for deploying Kagekyo, you have a few options. Number one is to use her as a beat stick with two Scotties. Scotty is the ultimate option for quick attackers, and you can pick from either the Caster or Ruler Variety. Certain extreme difficulty fights prevent you from running duplicate supports, but you can cheat this requirement by running one of each Scotty instead. Given that Kagekyo excels in those kinds of battles anyway, she can make especially good use out of this cheese. 
but if you're in the position of choosing, there are some things to consider. Castor Scotty has an evade on a noble phantasm which, for a survivalist like Kagekyo, is something you might want depending on how quickly enemy NPs come out. Ruler Scotty, on the other hand, gives you a stronger turn 1 push with a star dump. She can also focus stars onto our target's buster cards. Kagekyo only has one of them, but if you can crit with it, that's a substantial amount of damage right off the bat. Double Scotty setups also let Kagekyo run Black Grail pretty much with impunity, since you're accelerating the pace of the fight so much. Just be aware that over longer fights, Black Grail will eat into your survivability, and when you're operating on 3000 health margins, you're playing an extremely dangerous game. Option number 2 for deploying Kagekyo is to have her as an anchor. Either put her in your 5th or 6th slot depending on whether you're running a backline taunter. Once she comes out, it effectively becomes a solo run as long as the rest of your team doesn't overstay their welcome. For battles with stall or AoE phases, this keeps Kagekyo healthy while you let servants with more suitable skill sets handle those portions. The final option is, of course, the solo route. Aside from what we've already talked about, you can do some shenanigans to get an edge. Chen Gong, for instance, can manually proc Kagekyo's guts with his Noble Phantasm for an immediate grudge stack. If he taunts himself, then he'll ideally get destroyed on turn 1 along with your third member, letting Kagekyo have free reign. As a Chaotic Evil Servant, she gets the full benefit of Doman's skill set. His attack and crit buffs are nice in their own right, but his debuff suite actually pairs quite well with a would-be soloist. Attack reduction, delayed stun, and skill seal. It's good stuff, assuming you have a way to channel attacks onto Doman once he's done his job. Something like Gudaguda Guda Poster Girl is ideal for this purpose. Speaking of Poster Girl, if you're an absolute psycho, you can put one on Kagekyo herself to guarantee an early guts pop. One of Poster Girl's lesser used properties is its attack buff, which ranges from 60 to 80% depending on whether it's limit broken. For the record, don't limit break Poster Girl. It's one of those things where having multiple copies for utility is the right call. But if you made an oopsie, Kagekyo can make you feel a little better about it. That said, I will warn you that Taunt and Guts can have some odd and undesirable interactions, so my advice is to be careful. Believe it or not, it's actually possible to get double tapped. For generic usage, I'd recommend Traces of Christmas's Past for its cocktail of starting charge, quick, and NP gain. But for more specialized applications, consider a Guts effect. Divine Three-Legged Race has added NP damage, and it's coming back this year in Grand Nerofest. If you somehow miss it, you can grab Check Ready from Tesla Fest down the road. On top of Guts, it has a combo of NP damage and NP gain. As for command codes, I'd strongly recommend getting some heal effects. Maiden of Orleans gives you 1000 health once every 3 turns. Lucky Beast is available in the Mana Prism shop, but heal codes are a dime a dozen, so you should already have a bunch. Depending on the specific fight, you may also benefit from running cleanse codes like White Vessel's Command Seal. Damage over time effects are one of the big counters to gut spammers, so you'll want something in your back pocket for that situation. Kagekyo is a potent soloist, and while her anti-Genji niche doesn't get a lot of mileage, she doesn't need it to be an effective fighter. Funny enough, without Grudge Stacks or the Genji trait, she actually does slightly less NP damage than post-upgrade Lobo, but her skill set is a million times better. She stands out among Avengers in that she can stay in a given fight and endure counterattacks. In other words, you wouldn't really use her in a fight where enemies just sit there and take it like a training dummy. But as your opponent gets more tenacious and vicious, she really starts to shine. But as for whether you should roll on her, that's a far more difficult question. In any other year, she'd be a high-value pick. But this year introduces two meta supports and the cast of Lost Belt 6. So just understand that there's a big opportunity cost in play. If you're heavy on buster units or your account is weak in the AoE department, you might be better off waiting for January 2024, which has our second banner. But if you're lacking in good finishers and soloists, well, Kagekyo's got you covered. Thanks for watching. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come watch me at twitch.tv slash Tyson where I stream every weekend, 3 p.m. Pacific time, Friday through Sunday. I also have a video on Little Big Tango's welfare servant, Kichi Hogan. Oh, if you're interested in seeing the nitty-gritty of how Kagekyo operates in a solo environment, plus she mistress has quite a few videos on the subject, so I'd recommend giving those a look. See you next time.